We're now going to add the camera animations to the scene capture component to add some life to the preview mode. Let's start in BP Scene Capture. We need to save the current transform so that we know where to animate back to when we are transitioning from preview mode back to top mode. In the previous video, we talked about how the parent pawn was going to be communicating with BP Scene Capture for the transitions. So open BPP Pawn and create a custom event named User Changed View Mode. Before we work on it, let's set up the call from the reusable button. Inside of WC main button, in the change view mode, after the completed execution, cast to BPP pawn using a reference to the player pawn, and call this new user changed view event. Back to the BP scene capture. Add a new custom event called user changed view mode, and call this event from BPP pawn. Okay. Inside of BP Scene Capture, we need to save whether the balcony is on so we can set it back to when we switch back to top mode from preview mode. Create a new bool and set it from the W Toggle Balcony event. Our new user changed view mode will do much of the same thing, but with different values for the height. I collapsed the Get All Level Actors and Build Show Only list down to a function named Setup Cam by Mode. You'll notice that we have been using the flip-flop node to handle our toggle logic. We'll use that again here, and because top mode is the default, when this event is called, it will be going to preview mode and calling A first. So A is preview mode and B is top mode. So height for preview mode will be set to 1000, and height for top mode will depend on the value of our new bool variable. We need to create another new bool here to save which view mode we are currently in. Name it is top mode and set it to false on A and true on B. Back to our user change view mode, set up a branch at the end and if it is not top mode, call the move scene cam to new location function. Now when the view mode switches to preview mode, it will tell the camera to move to the next point. And if it switches to top mode, it will send it back to the top mode transform we created earlier. Let's test to see if this cycle is working. I can go to preview mode, and the camera is changing, and the ceiling is showing. When I go back to top mode, the ceiling goes away, and the camera is where it should be. Let's move on to the animation of the camera. Inside of BP Scene Capture, we will need two new transform variables named Starting Transform, and the other named End Transform. We are going to interpolate the transform from the camera's current transform to the requested new transform using a timeline component playing from the start. Inside of the timeline, create a new float curve and name it alpha. It will be a very simple transition from 0 to 1, lasting 3 seconds with a linear curve. Make sure to set use last keyframe to true. We will use only a linear curve as we want to interpolate the value outside of the timeline. From the update execution, add a set actor transform and from new transform, create an ease node. I set the function enumeration to ease in out so we have a smooth exit from our starting position and a smooth entrance to our ending position. Plug in the alpha value into alpha, the starting transform into A, and the end into B. A very important note about timeline components that I see way too often. The update execution line will be called every single frame. What you add after it must be prepared for that. If what you are doing after update does not need to be updated every single frame, don't connect to it. Use a different way to call it. Let's test this animation before we move forward. I'll spawn the map, and if I press preview mode, the animation starts nicely. The only problem is the immediacy with which the ceiling was made visible. Let's add a delay node to that logic. Back inside of BP Scene Capture, after it gets the call to change the view mode, add a delay of 2 seconds before it changes the height. Let's test again. Nice, much better. Let's now set up the Go To Location button in the Preview Mode widget. The first thing we need to do for this is to save which map point the scene cam is currently at. So inside of BPP pawn, create a new E map point variable and name it preview mode location. From our cycling logic, when we get the index from the array, we will also get the E map point and set this value to our new variable. Open WC main button 
And from the switch, drag off preview mode go to location, cast again to BPP pawn and get the new preview mode location, then call teleport user to location and plug that in. Let's again test our teleportation inside of preview mode. If I change to preview mode and select go to location, we are teleporting. Perfect. Now, just as we had done with the hovering logic to change what description said, let's also have it change based on which point of interest the camera was in. Inside of WC main button, add a get all widgets with interface and connect it to both completed executions after changing the location from the next or previous buttons. Call the W map point hover event and connect the value of preview mode location to the input using a pure cast from BPP pawn. Let's see how this is looking now. Ah, cool. We should modify the cursor a bit so we can see it a little better and get some feedback on when we click. I'm going to change the tint color of the image inside our W player cursor to an orange, but I may change this back, I'm not sure yet. I'll also add a new animation to play when the player clicks on the map. To do that, I need one more asset inside of Adobe Illustrator. I'll export it from its own artboard as a PNG and import it into Unreal Engine. Add it to an overlay that contains the original cursor and this new inside one. The animation of the cursor will be very simple. All it will do is make the original cursor scale down until zero and then scale back up. As it is scaling down, the cursor inside will scale up and then back down which gives this effect. For us to play the animation, we need to add the W mouse clicked event to the event graph. Get a reference to the animation and create a play animation node. I sped mine up to play twice as fast. Now from BPC VR pawn, create a new function named send click to cursor. Get all the widgets implementing our interface and call w mouse click. Add this function to the end of the function user pressed trigger. During testing, I noticed something wasn't right about where the cursor was relative to where I assumed it should be. If you turn on show debug on the widget interaction inside of BP3D map, you will see that it is displaying the cursor too high up and to the left to be of any use. To fix that, create a new scene component named cursor root and place user cursor into it. Make sure you change the target of set world location and rotation inside of the receive custom hit function to our new cursor root. Zero out the transforms and manually move it to where you would assume it would be. Let's test again. So much better. Turn off debug and let's explore the studio a bit. With our new preview mode installed and working and the scene capture component giving us these nice, simple camera adjustments as we transition with the map to different locations, we have an interface that our end users want to explore. Next, we'll add 3D hands in our VR pond and create an animation blueprint to control the hand poses.